bring your prayers and show your appreciation for them. I would like to have you turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. We're continuing to follow the life of Christ through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And the next, the next major story we have is of Jesus. Jesus, you're just not wanted here. This is what the, the story is about. A, a city near Sychar is uh, rejecting Jesus Christ. If you could have him come into your home right now, if you could have him come into your home right now, would, you, would he feel welcome? Yeah. Would he feel welcome in your home? So that's what this is about. These, these people would not receive him. They barred him from coming into their city. Lord Jesus Christ, make me a blessing. Make me a blessing, Lord, I pray. Help me, Lord, to help these your people. And help me, Lord, to help them to help others as well. Others in their lives and families who up till now have been rejecting you. Give us wisdom, Lord, please. Bless these words. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 51. If you'll read uh, verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, that he was going to die. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. There was a feast there, the Feast of Tabernacles. Happened in September, if you care about that thing. Uh, and it was a, a memorial to the 40 years of wandering in the desert living in tents for 40 years because the older generation had rejected the call of Christ to go up into Israel. They rejected their, their missions. Jesus brought, brought the, the Israelites across the Red Sea on dry ground. He took them up to Kadesh Barnea just below, it, just below the country of Israel sent out spies. How are we going to do this? They came back. Ten of the twelve spies rejected God's plan to go up there. It was too hard. The people were too big. They were giants. We can't do it. We can't do it. And here's the deal. When you look back on that, that older generation had been raised, born and raised as slaves. The newer generation was going to be born in the desert. And what God did there is he took them and he circled them around in the desert, around in the desert for 40 years, 38 and a half to be exact. And now they're remembering this Feast of Tabernacles. Once a year they go and they build up like stalls or tents. And they live in tents for a week. And that's what Jesus wants to go now, go and uh, celebrate the wandering in the wilderness. Very quickly, there are four major points I want to teach to you this morning. One, I want you to notice there was a time fixed. There's a time fixed and plans were made for the sufferings of Christ. For the sufferings of Christ. Verse 51 again. When the time was come that he should be received up. Now, it's already been planned. Nothing can stop God's plans. God had it planned that Jesus would go and die on the cross for the penalty of our sins. He would die. He, he would be buried. And that he would Raise it up again. Rise up again. It was all part of God's plan. Wanted you to notice that there are times that are fixed and plans made. 
when the time was come that he should be received up. We too are to be willing to suffer for Christ, to die for Christ. Yea, 2 Timothy 3, 10, 3, 12, all that will live godly in Christ will suffer persecutions. And we do, and we are, we are. And especially in all the world, uh, China has almost completely closed, closed down their, their churches there. We have uh, missionaries there that we need to pray for. Yes, we too are, should be willing to suffer and to die for Christ. We too have a plan for our lives. I love this. I love this verse in Jeremiah 29, 11. In Jeremiah 29, 11. See if I can get it up for you. For I know, God speaking, the thoughts that I think towards you, the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end or an expected hope. We too have a plan for our lives. We too have a course to finish. Second Timothy 4, 6, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul's about to die. The very last thing he wrote in the New Testament, very last chapter he wrote in the New Testament, he says, I'm ready to be offered. The time of my departure or death is at hand. I have fought the good fight. He says, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. We too have a course to finish. For many of us, if not most of us, our course, our plan is, is to help others, is to raise godly children and have, have godly marriages, to find ways to minister our spiritual gifts, to be useful to the kingdom of God. That is, uh, that is the course that we are to finish while we're yet here, in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, circled about, with so many a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Life is a long distance race and we have obstacles, we have pitfalls, we have mountains to climb, valleys to get through, rivers to do, all part of our particular race. So how do we do that? Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith keeping our eyes on Jesus, even in the down times, the bad times, the sick times. Keeping our eyes on Jesus, looking unto Jesus, we too have a course to finish. When he saw his death and sufferings approaching, he looked past them to the glory that would follow. We too can believe the same idea. And may, may we call it our being received up to glory. To be with Christ where he is when our time is being, re, is being received up, it's at his hand. He decides. He lifts our heads. Knowing that our redemption draws nigh. There is a there is a passage of scripture you need to remember when it comes to dying and death. Death is but a door. For the born again believer, it's just a door that we go through to get to heaven. There's a, a verse in 2 Corinthians 5, 8. We are confident, absolutely confident. 
we know this. We are confident, I say, and we are willing rather to be absent from the body. That's to die. He would rather be dead to the body, but to be present with the Lord. As even as I look out amongst us, we have so many of your loved ones already in heaven. And it's okay to grieve and to miss and to miss them terribly, but don't worry about them. They are having a wonderful, wonderful time there. They are in the presence of, of the Lord on this prospect of the joy that was set before him he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem the place where he was to suffer and to die he was fully determined to go and he would not be persuaded nothing could change his mind let's let nothing change our mind if there is something that could change your mind Satan will find it. He knows you. He knows me. If there's some weakness in our armor, he'll find it. Please shore up. Shore up your weaknesses and, your, and use your strengths and, and make yourself available to the Lord to do the good things that we must do while we're here. <coughs> I wanted you to notice the rudeness of the Samaritans in a certain village, not deserving to be named, who would not receive him. Verse 52 of our text. And he, he Jesus Christ, sent messengers before his face, and they went and entered into the village of, of the Samaritans to make ready for him. You know, that you, you go ahead and you make reservations in the local hotels, you get the food supplies you need. You resupply your little company of 12 disciples. He sent them ahead to do that. And in verse 53, and they did not receive him. They did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. He was looking past all of this right now. He's on his way to Jerusalem. First the tabernacle, Feast of Tabernacles, and later he's going to die there. They did not receive him. I wanted you to notice how rude, how ungrateful they were to him. They did not receive him, verse 53. They would not allow him to come into their village, but probably ordering their guards even to keep him out. We'll never know the blessings, the healing power, the appreciation of God upon them for taking care of his son. We'll never know because they weren't allowed to go in. Usually, and in some cases, it's the leadership of a village, the leadership of a, of a local church, the leadership of a country that speaks for everyone. And then many lose out on their blessings. So again, I can just imagine some council in this village saying, no, we're not letting him come in. No. Oh, they did not receive him. He would have paid for everything, maybe with gold out of a fish's mouth, who knows. Everywhere he had been, he'd been a generous guest. Wow. In, in the Samaritan village uh, where the woman at the well was there, he went and stayed almost a week. And he healed everybody he could. The whole village got evangelized. The whole village is even now probably in heaven because... They invited him to come to their town, Samaria. Politics aside even now, uh, when Bonnie and I visited Israel, there was a certain demarcation line in Israel 
that our guide wouldn't take us because the people that live in those northern cities of Samaria, the old Samaria, they're enemies to Americans. And they would hurt us if they could. Still there, animosity and hatred everywhere. He would have been, if they please, the greatest blessing that ever came to their village. Yet, they forbid him to come in. Psalms 84, 11, one of my very favorite verses. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Oh my goodness, I love that verse. I want to be the one that he doesn't withhold anything from. Don't you? No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Huh. The opposite is Jeremiah 5.25. Because of your sin, I will keep the good things from you. Biblical verse for grounding our teenagers as well. Because of your sin, I will keep the good things from you. Wanted you to notice their reason was because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. He had a torturous death coming up. Because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem, they noticed that. And they were determined to keep him out of their, out of their city. Maybe they had prejudices against Jews, yes, because a previous Samaritan village had been evangelized. Everyone thinks that their religion is the only one. And it's the innocents, and particularly the children, that pay the price. You see, they believed that you worship God at Mount Gerizim. It goes way back in history. We'll be covering it again someday soon. But uh, so the, the Samaritans worshiped here, way out here, to keep them from having to do the yearly trek into Jerusalem. They made up their own rules. Really made sense on a big picture. In the big picture, made pretty good sense. It's just that it was God's rule that they worship it from Jerusalem. So they made up their own rule that was very accommodating to them. And then it degenerated their worship into worshiping of idols. I want you to notice the resentment James and sweet John expressed at this rejection. Verse 54 in our text. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down out of heaven and consume them like Elijah did? I can just hear it. You want us to kill them all? Barbecue them? Here, first of all, here was something commendable. For they showed great confidence in the power they had received. They showed great zeal for the honor of their master. They've been with Jesus and even from last week. They'd seen so many miracles and tended to take them for granted. They just assumed that he could do whatever he wanted to do. They had seen him heal hundreds, if not thousands, he was, the, he was the way, the truth, and the life to get to heaven. And they're not even going to let you come in? I don't know who it was first, James or John. Looked at each other and one of them said, let's just kill them all. Also remember, this was not the first time a large group had insulted and rejected Jesus Christ. By the way, be careful, because in some of our behaviors, we're insulting Jesus also. Ask the Lord to show that to you. Remember the Nazarenes? 
casting him out of their city, his own people. Remember the, the Gadarens, the maniac of Gadara, when he, he put the, the demons into the pigs? And those people asking to leave? Oh, to have... Oh, to have Jesus Christ in your home ruling, in your village, in your town, doing his thing. Those people, those people never, never uh, recovered from their rejection. But there will be a time. There will be a time when God will not put up with rejecting him, with rejecting his teachings. He put up with it with the Nazarenes. He put up with, uh, he put up with it with the Gadarians. He put up with it with, with this unnamed Syrian town. He put up with it. But there's going to be a time when he will not tolerate it. I wanted you to notice the reproof Jesus gave to James and John for their fiery, furious zeal. Verse, 50, verse 55. But he turned and he rebuked them and said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man is not come. Jesus is the Son of Man. He's not come to destroy men's lives but to save them. And they went to another village. Some other village receives so much joy and happiness, healing that we know not of, healing, oh my goodness, all because somebody else rejected them. Some other village rejected him. So they went to another village. Jesus said to them, you're not aware of an evil spirit and disposition that you have. How much there is of secret pride, jealousy, personal revenge, which is covered under the pretense of zeal for Christ. I have a warning for us. The greatest of Christians through history have fallen to this. have fallen to this, there may, may be much evil lurking, hiding, stirring in the hearts of good people. James and John were good people. John's going to go on to write the Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. He's going to write the book of Revelation. But John's not perfect. You can't find anyone in the Bible but but Jesus, that was perfect. And he had a revenge in him that he wanted to crispy critter all those people there. There may be much evil lurking and stirring in the hearts of good people, and yet they themselves are not aware of it. We have been taught to love our enemies. We have been taught to bless them that curse, curse us and to call for grace from heaven, not fire from heaven. We've been taught to love. We're, we've been taught to love one another, let alone our enemies, those that would harm us. We're, we've been taught to love and forgive, to bless them that curse you, to call for grace from heaven, not fire. I remember in the military, I was on watch, and when I was sitting on my little stool watching all these lights going off all the time, I would have my Bible open. And I, I had this one fella, he hated me. Well, he hated Christ, I think. Come to find out later, because I stood my ground, later had a good sit down with him, and his father had been a, a Baptist preacher, but a poor father. So he hated everything his father stood for. And he would go by me all the time and say nasty, bad things. 
and try to trick me with questions. And when he would persecute me or curse me, I would always say, thank you. With a big smile, thank you. What's it say? What's it say? It says, we've been taught to love our enemies. We've been taught to bless them that curse you. And later on, that had a, a great effect upon him. Uh, and we had a good long sit down. We are now under the dispensation, the dispensation of bondage, terror, and death. No more. We're not under that dispensation. It's past. We're under the dispensation of love. How will you know them? You'll know them by their love for one another. And we're called to love one another even despite each other's weaknesses. We're called to tolerate and forbear, to love them and not speak behind their back and not, not criticize them. We've been taught to love. A proclamation of peace was given the day Jesus was born. Remember this? Peace on earth. Good will toward man. So we have a life principle here. I haven't given these out too much lately. Let us never do anything for Jesus, which is contrary to Jesus. And I even want to change that. Let us never say anything which is contrary to Jesus. What would Jesus say? What would Jesus do? Life principle, work at that. Again, again, verse 55, he turned, he rebuked them and said, you don't know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man has come to dis- is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. And they went to another village. Jesus would not force his way, but quietly and peaceably went to another village where they were not so selfish, where they were receptive to him. <coughs> Don't be like the Samaritan village. Don't send Jesus away. There's so much in that. Don't reject Jesus Christ. Oh, we don't. No, we don't. We receive what we want to receive. And we reject some of the teachings we don't agree with. They're they're not comfortable to us because of our own lifestyle. Don't reject Christ. Jesus is knocking on the door of our hearts. We need to open the door fully, not just halfway. Jesus can get an arm and a leg and a head in. We need to open our hearts all the way to him. That we could learn to speak as he would have us speak. To do as he would have us do. Revelation 3.20 Written, the pen, the pen was from John who wanted to call down thunder out of the sky, fire out of the sky. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, Jesus says. If any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Open the door immediately let him in. If, if you're feeling the, the Holy Spirit knocking on your, the door of your heart and that you've got it partially closed, open the door immediately. Luke chapter 12, at the beginning, I asked you to be ready to turn there, but Luke chapter 12 speaks of this, 34 through parts of 40, up to 40. Luke 34, 40. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Be ye, and be ye yourselves, verse 36. 
like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, that they may open the door immediately. Blessed are those servants. Verse 37. Whom the Lord when he comes shall find watching. Verse 40. Be ye therefore ready. For the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, will come at an hour when you're not ready, when you think not. Immediately. And my challenge to us is open the door all the way. Don't just open the door to the things that are convenient. Oh, I like that, I like that, I like that, but I don't like that. I don't agree with that. Open the door immediately. Some only have partial openings into their heart. Be aware of that. You know, it will be too late someday. It'll be too late. Oh, I hope not for you. Too late. Luke 13, 25 said, When once the master of the house has risen up and shuts the door, and you begin to stand outside when you've missed the rapture, and you knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto me, he shall answer and say unto you, I don't know you. I don't have a relationship with you. But wait, I know you. Yeah, but I don't know you. It's so important for you to understand this universal evangelism is a trick of the devil. Not everyone that knows the Lord is going to go to heaven. Only they that he knows you, a personal relationship with him. For he knows you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Some do say, we don't want you. We don't want you. We have no room for you in our lives. Our lives are happy right the way they are. Yeah, that's, that could be. But what's coming next week? You're not ready for. What's coming next month? You're not ready for. You're not ready for what next year brings if you have no relationship, no caring relationship. You're not caring. You're not carrying the Lord with you wherever you go. We have no room for uh, in our lives. Our lives are so busy and hectic and full and yet the most important thing we can have is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So make room in your life. Make room for Christ and he will make room for you. I love that. And I give a warning. Because there will be a time when God will not tolerate rejecting, He won't tolerate you deciding what you want to believe of His word or not. That time is coming. And He does not tolerate that. Tolerate rejecting of Christ and His teachings. Lord Jesus Christ, oh, Holy Spirit, be upon me now, using me with my right words. First of all, Lord, there might be those within the sound of my voice. They've invited you into their life, partly. You've got a leg or an arm into their life, mostly. But, oh, God, I just pray, dear Lord, with all my heart for us to open the doors of our heart that there would appear to be no rejection of you, no rejection of all of your word. Lord, you're so great and wonderful and wise and you know so much about us. You know what we need. You know what areas of our life 
We need to shore up. You know what areas of our life we need to sacrifice for the good of the kingdom. We ask you, dear Lord, to hear our prayers as we look at our hearts and lives and ask the question, are you fully, are you fully in our heart or just partly? Lord, I want to pray, Lord, for any here within the sound of my voice, Lord, that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. They don't know if you know them. Lord, I pray that if there's any here that recognize their need, recognize your power and love and strength, that Lord, right now, they would say, Lord, I need you. I need you in my life permanently, not, par not partly. I need you in every area of my life, Lord. So, Lord, they would say, forgive me for my sin. And come into my heart fully. Come into my life fully and be my Lord, directing me, guiding me through my race, the race, Lord, that you have put before us, individually picked for just us. Lord, I recognize that there are those here that had it really hard in their youth. Lord, help them to overcome that and to come to you and to have learned the positive lessons that life gives us. And Lord, even just as important as in my prayer for these people is that, Lord, you would give us a love for others, that we would love others as you love them, that we would love, forgive, tolerate, and forbear one another. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.